We'll now go back to oxygen, remembering that its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. You might recall from our earlier slide that the two electrons in the 1s orbital are buried deep beneath the 2s and 3 2p orbitals, like this. The two 1s electrons are called core electrons because they're buried too deeply to easily reach. The six combined total electrons in the 2s and 3 2p orbitals are called valence electrons. These are the electrons that actually participate in chemical reactions. So oxygen has six valence electrons, two in its 2s orbital and four in its three 2p orbitals. It wants to gain two more to obtain a noble gas configuration like that of neon. Now you should know that oxygen's valence electrons are further away from its nucleus than its core electrons. This means that its valence electrons are more reactive, less stable, and higher in energy than its core electrons. In fact, for all electron configurations, the higher the principal quantum number n, the further away from the nucleus, less stable and more reactive the electrons are. This is shown in the figure to the right, which we call an energy diagram. So you can see this energy diagram portrays the most stable electrons, which are in the 1s orbital closest to the nucleus as being down here. We go higher energy, less stable, more reactive in the 2s and 2p electrons shown up here. We can see then that any group of orbitals that have the same n number, such as 2s and 2p, also have the same energy level. This then would be the way of drawing oxygen's electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, in an energy diagram. Remember that we fill up each box from the bottom lowest energy down here to the top highest energy in order. Electrons don't like to be paired up unless it's necessary in order to avoid going to a higher energy level. So we don't pair up electrons in the same energy level until we have to. So let's see if we can fill these up for oxygen. Oxygen has uh, two electrons in its 1s orbital, so I fill them up. One has a plus one half spin, one has a minus one half spin. Now, now oxygen's next electrons are in its 2s orbital. It's going to have one as a plus one half spin and one as a minus one half spin. Now it has four electrons in its 2p orbital, and they're going to first occupy the 2p orbital completely unpaired. So one, two, three. Now the fourth electron now has a choice. It could either go in the 3s orbital up here, or it could pair up and stay in the 2p. It's much more stable to stay paired up, even though electrons don't like to be paired up because they tend to repel each other. Thus the fourth electron does pair up and ends up here in this 2p orbital shown here. This electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, represents oxygen's most stable configuration, which is called its ground state. Now, electrons can be promoted to higher energy levels, usually by pumping energy into the system. For example, if we pass electricity through an oxygen atom, the influx of energy can cause one of its valence electrons to jump up to a 3s orbital like this. You can see how the electron went from its 2p orbital up to the 3s orbital. I hope, and at least. Let's take a look at it again. We'll go back. So here is uh, oxygen's ground state. We have all of these electrons in the 2p orbital, but if I pump some energy into oxygen, one of those electrons will go unpaired up to the 3s orbital. Let's go back and forth and watch it happen. Woo. Woo. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Okay. So this uh, circumstance where one of the electrons has been promoted to a higher energy level is called an excited state. 
Even though the three electrons in the 2p orbitals are now all unpaired, it's still less energetically favorable, less stable to have one electron up here in this higher energy 3s level. Hence the promoted electron up here in the 3s orbital will eventually fall back down to the 2p orbital. And when it does, it will give off energy, usually in the form of heat or light. Now this is how a light bulb works. For example, a neon light functions because electricity, energy, is passed through a bulb that is filled with neon gas. The neon gas's individual atoms, valence electrons, then get excited and get promoted to a higher energy level called an excited state. And then as those electrons fall back down to their ground states, they give off colorful light. This, just so you know, is our fun fact for the day. <laughs> I'll now return to this figure and do some explaining that I promised I'd do during our last presentation. You guys remember how I said that the D block over here starts at 3D, even though it begins on row 4? Also, I told you guys that the F block starts at 4F, even though it begins on row 6. Now the reason for this is because the very first d orbitals here are actually closer to the nucleus and lower in energy than the s and p orbitals that are found in the same row. That's the reason why the first row of d orbitals are actually at an energy 3 level, one level more stable than the s and p orbitals in the same row. An analogous thing occurs for the f block elements here. This might seem super weird, but it's totally true. We'll now finish with one final problem, question number 11 from problem set 6. I want you guys to figure out what is wrong with the following electron configurations for atoms in their ground states. As I've done before, I will be sharing the answers with you, but you're welcome to pause it first and try these on your own before you have me uh, go ahead and dictate the answers to you. As I've done in the past as well, I won't show you all the answers, but just a few with the hope of getting you started and letting you do the rest on your own. What is wrong with the electron configurations for atoms in their ground states? So question A says 1s2, 2s2, 3s1. If we look at the periodic table and try and reason our way through this, we can see that 1s2 tells us a nice ground state of two electrons occupying the first two uh, elements in the p block. 2s2 looks great, but then we have one electron that totally skipped the 2p row and went all the way up to a 3s row. So when it asks us the question, what is wrong with the following electron configurations uh, for their ground states, you would say this electron should be in the 2p, uh, uh, or I should say in a 2p orbital in its ground state. So this is obviously not an element in its ground state. This is an element in which one of its 2p electrons has been excited all the way up to a 3s orbital. For the fun of it, we'll now do question C. It gives me the electron configuration of neon, 3s2, 3d5. Neon, if we look at the periodic table, is element number 10. As we go after neon, we hit elements 11 and 12 in the th uh, 3s orbital block. That looks just fine, two electrons filling that. Now if we were to continue left to right, the next orbital that we would be hitting would be the 3p orbitals. However, the next electrons that we see are all up all the way in the 3d orbitals, which don't begin until you hit element number 21. So what this means is in its ground state, these electrons should be in the 3p orbitals. And that answers that question. 
So this seems to me to be like a wonderful place for us to stop. And it concludes our uh, discussion and delving into chapter six. I hope you guys all enjoy doing your problem sets, work hard, study the material deeply, spend good time studying and preparing yourselves for uh, our future exam. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon.